Well, I'm talking about um, the potential mechanism through which aspirin may prevent cancer, and in particular, colorectal cancer. And the ideas I've been uh, developing during the past few years are that um, given the low dose requirement for these apparent anti-cancer effects, uh, the same mechanism of action that explains reduced risk of uh, cardiac problems may also underlie the protection against uh, colorectal cancer because there is evidence that platelets may participate uh, in two different ways. One in the early stages of cancer development by interacting with local adjacent resident cells of the colorectal mucosa, perhaps at sites of mucosal injury, and release during platelet activation a number of uh, mediators that can feed downstream responses in adjacent nucleated cells, uh, triggering their proliferation and transformation, inhibiting apoptosis, promoting androgenesis. The other way in which platelets may have a role is in their crosstalk with cancer cells. Once cancer cells are formed and circulate, platelets interact with cancer cells and um, cancer cells may activate platelets. Uh, platelet activation surrounding cancer cells may shield circulating cancer cells from NK cell attack and immune recognition and platelets cross-talking with cancer cells may enhance the metastatic potential of cancer cells by triggering a phenotypic switch uh, towards uh, stem cell-like uh, cell. If you're talking about platelets, the primary molecular target would be cyclooxygenase 1 which is the only COX isoform present in human platelets, at least in mature human platelets. And uh, the dose requirement for um, these anti-cancer effects that have become apparent in both pharmacoepidemiology and clinical trials of aspirin, um, the dose requirement are consistent with the dose requirement for inhibiting platelet COX-1 activity and and thromboxin biosynthesis in uh, platelets. It's a very unique mechanism that distinguishes aspirin from all the other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So all the other NSAIDs uh, simply compete with the substrate for binding arachidonic acid, for binding to a common docking site within the cyclooxygenase channel. Aspirin does the same thing initially, but then acetylates this single serine 529 and uh, through the O-acetyl group of acetyl salicylic acid blocks or obstructs the cyclooxygenase channel in its narrowest portion and therefore interferes with arachidonic acid moving up the channel to reach its uh, catalytic site. If you're talking about primary prevention, uh, if you add up the cancer prevention benefit with the cardiovascular benefit, these two together will outnumber an increased risk in uh, major GI bleeding by a factor of three to five. And Peter Rothwell has shown some data this morning addressing this very issue. Also, the time course, it seems to be different. You tend to see these upper GI bleeding events appearing early on and then apparently the risk decreasing or disappearing while with the cancer benefit you seem to be increasing the benefit as you progress with more pro prolonged therapy. Well I guess it depends on um, several factors. One is the acceptance by the medical scientific community, which seems to be growing. Uh, the second is uh, a regulatory review of the existing evidence, which hasn't yet been uh, publicly announced. And thirdly is uh, treatment recommendations by 
uh, independent organizations, and so far there is only one organization that has explicitly mentioned prevention of colorectal cancer in the treatment recommendation for aspirin in primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. This is the uh, United States Preventive Services Task Force that for the first time a few months ago has issued a new treatment recommendation for aspirin um, where they say that for certain people they recommend using low-dose aspirin for preventing cardiovascular disease and colorectal cancer. We should spend more money in research on, uh, on aspirin and cancer. Thank <music> you.